Today on Community Cooking, we have guest chef Abby Gremion sharing her love of Cajun cuisine. We're making a one-pot Cajun chicken Alfredo served with a side of cornbread and hot honey butter. We are cooking with some of the best chefs from right here in our own community. So grab a seat, get comfortable. We've got another great meal for you. This is your Community Cooking. Welcome to Community Cooking. I am your host, Kirk Lines. In our kitchen today is Abby Gremillon. Hi, Abby. Hey, Kirk. It's great to be here. It's great to have you. Now, Abby, you are from Louisiana. Yes, I am. All right. Uh, your home chef, and not your first uh, community cooking rodeo, let's say. You've been here a few times before. I sure have. It's great to be back. We've got a one pot Cajun chicken Alfredo, and we're going to be doing a cornbread to go with that. Yes, so the Cajun Chicken Alfredo is a nice kind of twist on your regular Chicken Alfredo. It just kind of kicks it up a little and, bit. And that's kind of become your thing a little bit. You sort of take um, Cajun Creole classics and combine them with uh, dishes that, that might not even be you know, Cajun or, or, or American, for let's say, for that matter, and sort of kind of come up with your own, your own thing, correct? Absolutely. That's great. That's great. I mean, is this just sort of a way to kind of like break up the same thing, different day sort of thing? Or? Right. Right. Well, who wants to eat the same thing every day? Like, I, I think s spice is literally the spice of life. So why not yeah. spice up your food? Yeah. And sometimes really interesting things happen when you combine ethnicities like that. Really interesting stuff. Great. Well, we are starting with the cornbread. Why don't you start by running us through the ingredients we have here? Okay. So we've got flour. We have our cornmeal. We've got eggs, butter, sugar, and uh, s some baking powder, and some salt. Okay. And then we also have a little bit of uh, pepper sauce. Some pepper sauce. Oh, I, and we have to include the, the buttermilk. That's a really important part of the, the cornbread. Now, for the hot honey sauce that we're going to, or the hot honey that we're going to do, so we have some raw honey right. right here. We've got some Tabasco, and obviously our butter. Great. So... Great. All right. Well, where do we start? Okay. So let's go ahead and um, let's start with the cornmeal. We're going to put our cornmeal and our flour right into a, a skillet. Pan, a skillet on the, on the stove. That is interesting. Don't know if I've ever seen it done that way. So I am, well, my curiosity is peak. You know, it's, it's, oh, we're on a, a one pot uh, meal kind of a. True. Right? Sort of goes with that theme. Let me get out of your way. Yes. And we should mention that, is that just regular AP all-purpose flour? Yes, just regular all-purpose flour, stuff you'll just normally get in the grocery store. And you use a sort of a finer uh, cornmeal. That's not like, yes. a, of course, like not something you make grits or polenta with. No, no. No, this is a specific cornmeal. Okay. So, and then you're going to go ahead and you're going to take two eggs and break that in. Yeah, right. One pot cornbread. And turn on the heat now. So, and then we're going to okay. throw our, our buttermilk in, in so there. that we don't scramble our eggs. Yes. Because that would happen. That would happen. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start whisking it. Okay. And then we'll throw in the salt and the baking right soda. So, and what's going to happen is as this pan gets hotter, like you're going to see it's literally going to foam up really, really fast. Okay. And I'm sure a lot of that has to do with the leavening that you're going to put in, the, the baking soda. Yeah. And the, and the egg. And so let's go ahead and throw that in now. Okay. Here's your baking soda. Not baking powder, but baking soda. Baking soda. And then salt. Salt. And then the sugar. And the sugar. Last but not least. You always got to have a little bit of sugar in cornbread, right? Absolutely. It's funny because, I mean, you know, it's, it's amazing how much sugar you can add to cornbread without it being like a sweet thing. Absolutely. Although, you know, it's weird. You have two different camps. You have your more savory cornbreads, things that have uh, ingredients like jalapeno or cheddar cheese or even sometimes some bacon. Mm -hmm. And then you have the cornbread that's like, that is on the sweeter side, that's sweetened and then maybe even sweetened, like you're doing it with honey. Right. But I've even seen people in certain parts of the South butter up cornbread and then sprinkle sugar on it. Oh, no. <laughs> I see, yeah. That's just not really how I, I like to eat my cornbread, but, you know, to each their own. Well, and, you know, cornbread's throughout the, whole, the entire South. 
You know, I mean, so it's like you're going to have different styles of, you know, depending on the cuisine that's served, you know, regionally. Absolutely. I'm going to start cleaning up the side of the pan just so that everything gets mixed in. Right. It smells amazing. You can already smell it cooking in the pan right now. So. Yeah. The, I, I, I love I love cornbread. I think that for me, you know, if, if I'm going to, like, especially with certain meals, chili, like, give me some cornbread with that. Oh, yeah. Good, a good, any good southern meals, some fried chicken, some greens. Yeah, you know, I, I really think that corn, cornbread is one of those things that it has to be sweet and savory at the same time, or else it's just not not real cornbread. Well, and, and your, 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 your next dish that we're going to make on the other side of the, the next br the break coming up is the, the one-pot Cajun chicken Alfredo. Uh, I, I don't know how necessarily you're going to make a Cajun, and we'll, we'll figure that out, but... Um, you know, it's pasta, it's Italian, and not un uncommon, especially, you know, Italian-Americans to, to eat bread with pasta. Yes. So this sort of works on that level, right? It's, Absolutely. It's, you know, now, as you can see, it's hot. Everything is, is already yeah, look at that. in your... there. And then you know what? We're going to grease our pan. Oh, uh, shall we? Shall we do it with, uh, can we put the butter? Where do you want to put the butter? Actually, let's go ahead and grease our pan. We're going to throw the butter in here right, for the honey butter, that, and then we're going to use the paper. Uh, right there with you. Here we go. A little chef hack here, actually. <laughs> you know, it's, it, if, you're, if you're using butter in a recipe and you need to grease a pan, um, it's, don't, no need to double dip. There you Every go. little bit. That is the, yeah, you're using up, you know, something you paid for and, uh, you know, not, um, not wasting anything else. Well, and then your, your hands don't get dirty. True. So, all right, so we've got a nice greased pan. Then we're going to go ahead and spoon out our cornbread. You see, it's already starting to stick to the bottom of the pan because it cooks that quickly. So. And what's the reason that you're getting it hot first, you know, like scientifically in terms of the recipe? It, you know, I'm not really sure, but all I know is that we always mixed it up into the skillet. Well, you know what's funny? I, I, I make my cornbread is in a, in a cast iron skillet. Uh -huh. And one of the things that, uh, and my recipe is sort of a combination of, of several recipes, and, and, and one of the things that I do with the skillet first is I, I, I put it in the oven and get that skillet pretty hot with the grease in it, and then the, the batter goes into it, and it, it immediately starts bubbling. So maybe there's something to that? I really think so. You know, but as you can see, it's absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great color. Then we're going to throw that in the oven. Okay, so speaking of which, how hot's our oven? Um, I want to say it's at... 345. Okay. And approximately how long? About, a, about 30 minutes. Okay, great. So why don't I get that in now, and you're going to start on the, the hot honey butter. Yes. All right. So Into the oven it goes. Into the oven it goes. All right, so now we're going to do our honey butter. All right. It's pretty simple, so we're going to take our honey, we're going to mix it in. Or your butter. Now, is that salted or unsalted or butter? This is, this is unsalted butter. Unsalted. So okay. we're going to... Go ahead and take our fork, mash it up just a little bit. So that way it's easy to combine everything. Okay. We're going to throw our honey in, and we're going to throw our Tabasco in. And that raw honey does like to crystallize when it gets to a certain temperature. So, But once it heats up, it's going to do its thing just like regular honey. Absolutely. Mm. Look at that. You smell it. Oh, it just, yeah, you oh, do. Man. I, I, smell, I smell pepper sauce. The smell is amazing. So you've got a sweet heat here going here, right? Absolutely. Which is always a, a good combination. Absolutely. So and all you do is you just mash it up. If you want to use your hand mixer, you can do that too um, to have it kind of be a little bit more smooth. But remember, we're one potting it here, so why, right? Right. We've got a fork. Got a lot a easier to clean just, than our hand mixer. Absolutely. Just, just use that. And so there we go. And that's it. And we just kind of keep working it until. And then what makes it uh, the hot is the is the heat that's in it. It's not actually heated itself. Right. It's, the, it's, it's, the pepper it's just the spice. Beautiful. And remember, right. don't be afraid of spice. Well, while you continue mashing away there, uh, why don't we uh, get cleaned up? Come uh, take a break. We'll come back and we'll make our one pot Cajun chicken Alfredo. Perfect. Sound good? Sounds great. Right. Don't go away. and bananas I want to eat 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 apples and bananas I need to eat 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 apples and bananas why can't I eat 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 apples
apples and bananas. One in five children struggles with hunger in America. Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. Welcome back to Community Cooking. I am in the kitchen with Abby Grimion, and we're making Cajun food. That's right. Cajun Creole. That's right. Cajun Creole American Italian hybrid. Yes, with a twist. <laughs> right. With a twist. So we've got our cornbread in the oven. We've made our hot honey butter, and now it's time to make a one pot Cajun chicken Alfredo. That's right. Why don't we start by running us through the ingredients? Here. Okay, so we've got um, we've got our chicken. It's been all cut up, some boneless, skinless chicken breast. Mm -hmm. We've got some chicken stock. We have got cream. We've got um, black pepper, black pepper, fettuccine, some olive oil. Oh, Parmesan cheese. Or, I'm sorry, Parmesan cheese. <laughs> okay. Um, we've got a little bit of I think it's uh, that white pepper. No, no, I think it's a, a garlic powder. Garlic powder. Then okay. we have our minced garlic. Uh, we have our DIY Cajun seasoning. And some salt. Okay, and then of course we have our pasta. Now, the DIY Cajun seasoning that you referenced is something that you've made before on the show. Absolutely. And it's it's a combination of a lot of different things. We've got salt, and we've got smoked paprika, and there's some uh, dried thyme in there, and there's a little bit of dried oregano in there, right? And some Italian seasoning. Italian seasoning, that's what it was. Cayenne, and you know, all kinds of just wonderful things. So when you put it together, it's just amazing. It's basically a Cajun seasoning, but something that she made with the spices she had in her own cabin. Great. Uh, where do we start? Okay, so first we're going to go ahead and take this chicken and we're going to brown this up. Okay, do you need so, some oil first? Sure, let's throw the oil in there and the chicken. We're going to start cooking that. We've got a nice hot pan here and it's one pot and you've chosen that pot to be a wok actually. I love cooking with a wok because you've got so much surface area. I feel like you can work with your food a little bit better. Right, so. and, and it doesn't have to be a wok. I mean, it, it, it could truly be like a, like some sort of a, a wide soup pot if you need it, if you didn't have a wok at home. It's true, it's true. This I'd, makes sort of like the mixing part of it a little easier. It really does, it really does. I just, I love my wok. <laughs> yeah, I do too, I do too, I do a lot. I, I, I deep fry in my wok. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, it's great. I'll have to great. try that. So, we're gonna throw our chicken in there. Being careful not to throw the juice in there as well. Yeah, because you want it to brown, so yeah. you got it. So, and what I like is uh, sometimes when I go to the grocery store, I'll pick up my chicken, and then when I get home, I'll cut it up into these cubes, and I'll have it kind of in, in separate little bags. So that uh -huh. way, if I'm home and, and I'm like, hey, you know what, I want to make a chicken salad, you just grab one of those bags, throw really? it in the pot, and then you're done. Right. So... Yeah, let's be honest, like handling chicken, you know, not always the, 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 my most favorite thing, right? Not really. <laughs> but it's it's a great chicken. protein. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, you're using breast here. Uh, could you use chicken thigh? You could. You could. But I like I just prefer the breast. I think the breast cooks up a little bit better. Well, you know, I, I was thinking about it. And you know what? The more I think about it, the more I do like the idea of chicken breast for this dish. And here's why. Uh, typically, I'm a chicken thigh fan. I think that the chicken has the chicken thighs have more flavor, but they're a little bit uh, more fat to them. Yes. And you're, you're, you're making a pasta here that has cream and it has Parmesan cheese and it's a very rich sauce. So I think the cleaner flavor of the chicken breast, I think, behooves the dish. Yes. That's well, my verdict. Well, and for me, I'd rather have like the. Right I would rather have the fat in my cream and in my cheese than in my protein. Okay. All right. So. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. So after that, we're going to go ahead and add our chicken stock. Or do you want, do we season it all? With Actually, yeah. Let's go ahead and season it first. Okay. And uh, here's the thing. Don't ever be afraid of seasoning. Don't. So on the other side of the break, I was, I was referencing or asking, like, what's going to make it Cajun? I think we're starting to see here. It's, Part of it is this, this this mix that you've created that is pretty utilitarian. I'm sure that that could be put, put into a lot of different dishes, soups or stews. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, gumbos, jambalayas. You could probably blacken with that as well. You can. You know, I love to use this, like, grilling. Or just, you know. Yeah, or just even stuff that's not Cajun Creole. Right. right. I'll, I'll even, like, make uh, the kettle corn. On the on the stove oh, and yeah. use that as my seasoning, 
Oh yeah, um, I can see that, that working really, really well. It's really beautiful. So then I'm gonna go ahead and, so you see that I, I turned it just so that everything cooks yeah, evenly and, and then- don't be shy with the seasoning here. You're no, don't, shy. don't be shy. Like that's, that's I think where a, a lot of people get in trouble is that they're afraid of the seasoning. Don't be afraid of the seasoning. Especially Embrace it. Especially with this type of cooking. I mean, you know, there's not, <laughs> insipid is, is, is not a, a word that comes to mind, or bland is not a word that comes to mind when, when you're talking about Cajun or Creole food. If, if your Cajun or Creole food is bland, there's something wrong. So. Yeah, something went horribly wrong. <laughs> <laughs> went horribly wrong. So, do you see, like, it's cooking really nice and really quickly, which is the other reason why I love to use the wok for this. So, and we're trying to actually, we're, are we, we're cooking this chicken through, right? Yes. Well, pretty much. Pretty much. So, you know, it's going to take us just a few minutes, but the other reason why I like to have it cubed is that it, it cooks faster. So, yeah. we can get yeah. on to the good stuff. And you could also probably, if you needed to multitask, you could probably lid that and walk away and do a few things, come back, stir it. Lit it again. That's walk, right. Right. I mean, you just you got to be careful not to leave it on too long. Right, but there's a, there's a lot of chicken in there. That's not gonna. That's gonna take a while before that starts to burn. You it know will. What I mean? It will. So. Yeah, and I can smell the the aroma coming off. That's really nice. The, it's all, everything just sort of comes together as one. It's, it's the, the really interesting thing about about this type of cooking is it, there's all these different parts that really create a, a whole new whole. You know what I mean? It's it, it, you, while you pick up certain nuances and you go, okay, well, I can taste the garlic, obviously, or what have you, the thyme, or whatever's in there, the, 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 over, the, the overall flavor is something all its own. Mm -hmm. It's something all its own, and it, it's, it's, it's either, you know, I'll, I'll taste something that's labeled either Cajun or Creole and go, yep, that's authentic, or you're like, eh, yeah. it needs a few more, uh, few more ingredients. So... To make sure this isn't meh, we're going to throw in our garlic now. Okay. And that's just a, like a pulverized garlic paste? Yeah, this paste. is just a pulverized garlic paste. Um, you can get these at the grocery store, or you could make it home if you wanted. I'm going to be paper towel guy today. Yes. There we go. Paper towel guy gotcha. is very important. All right. I got gotcha. All right. So we're going to fold that in as well. Okay. Thank you. Oh, gosh, the smell. <laughs> then, when the, then when the garlic hits it, right? Oh, Lord. It's a whole it's new level. Between the, these out. Between, yes, between the spices and the garlic, the smell's amazing. I can't wait for everybody at home to try this. Yeah, and you can see the chicken starting to firm up. And it's giving you a little bit more room in the pan there. Yep. And then just, just kind of being mindful. If I see a piece that hasn't been cooked all the way, I, I turn it. Okay, yeah, right. And, uh... But it won't take us too much longer to have all this cooked. Right. So. So maybe about a minute or two longer. Then we're going to throw in our chicken stock. Okay. And we're. And that's just a a, 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 a candor box stock. Correct? Absolutely. Okay. And you know, listen, we. While while it's always nice using stuff that you make, I mean, this is not not a bad product at all anymore. I, use it, I have it in my, my cupboard all the time. Absolutely. Well, and I, I feel sometimes, like, to make chicken stock, it's it's more of a hassle than what it's worth. Well, it depends. I mean, listen, you know, there will be times where you need to, you need to, like, you know, maybe poach a chicken. Right. You know, who knows? Uh, there's, there's opportunities there. Or you or, or you've roasted a chicken, and you've got, like, a whole chicken, and you've got, like, chicken carcass there that, it, you know. Yeah. No, there's nothing wrong with throwing that into a pot with a bunch of aromatics and, you know, letting it cook for a while and then creating liquid gold. Absolutely. But, Absolutely. But in a pinch or just, you know, on a weeknight or if it's not on hand, yeah, that stuff works that. great. Olive oil. Now we're going to go ahead and add that. add that chicken stock in there. Okay. Okay. We're we'll let that cook down. So what hasn't cooked all the way yet is going to real sure, quick. Sure, it'll finish cooking. Yeah, once that comes up to like, you, you looking to bring that up to like a boil now? Yes. Okay. So I'm gonna. Just, I turned up my heat a little bit more just to make sure that this cooks a little bit quicker. Okay. And then. Uh, well, you know what they say about watch pots, right? Watch pot never boils. <laughs> 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 and then you know these. Things, 
do have a trick to them because you know it's like you, you you leave that pot on there for too long, it gets too hot, you take it off, it cools down. So absolutely, absolutely. So and here we go, we're we're seeing it. It's starting to bubble. So I see. And now you're actually going to cook the pasta in that pot with it. Absolutely. That's why it's one pot. That is why it's in, one in case pot. Y'all haven't, haven't figured that out. It's it's it, the pasta's going right in into the pool with everything else. Mm-hmm. All right. And uh, and I, I honestly think it's it's the best way to do it. Number one, you don't have as many dishes, but then that pasta as it's cooking, it soaks up all of the all the spices and everything else that's in it. And in turn relinquishes some of its own natural starches and helps the sauce. It's yeah. sort of a give and take there, it, right? It thickens it up. Absolutely. So we're gonna let that yeah, cook for maybe just one more minute. It's nice going. and boiling. Now, okay. before I forget, we gotta add some pepper. Okay. Gotta add some pepper. Get, this all ready for you you get about 20 turns. Again, don't be afraid 20 of 20 turns. Okay. 20 turns. I like that. That's 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 uh, that, that, that's precise. <laughs> yes. Now you know what? Since it's it's nice and. Everything's boiling. I'm actually going to throw in my pasta now. And Great. I'm not going to use this whole thing. I'm just going to grab. You're going to put the cream in first? No, I'm not going to put the cream in first. I'll oh, do that. Okay. I'll do that in a minute. But I'm going to grab my pasta. I'm going to break it in half. I'm going to throw it in there. So that way that pasta starts to cook. Right away. And it's so going to get. Yeah, I guess six of one, half a dozen of the other. You put it all in the same pot anyway. So the yeah. that you do it, you're just going to then finish with the cream and finish with the cheese. Absolutely. Okay, I got gotcha. you. So, yeah, so we're going to, I'm just literally just pushing that down into the, into uh, the chicken broth so that way it starts to loosen up and boil. And it doesn't take long for this to, to cook at all. Yeah, maybe eight to ten minutes. And, and you, uh, you want to kind of keep it moving a little bit so that your pasta doesn't clump together and get starchy. Exactly. But, like, you know, if you, if you have to walk away to, to go do something real quick, you know, you're, you're going to be all right. Okay. So. Yeah, yeah. As we said earlier, a watched pot never boils. No, it doesn't. So, but just, I'm just going to keep working until that pasta gets all the way down. Okay. And you could, if you wanted to, you could substitute pasta. If you could do something like a, like a penne in there or, or like a, a shorter, shorter noodle like that, that would still work. Absolutely. Well, and, you know, I mean, if you're, if you're at home and, like, you're gluten-free, you know, you can always throw in, like, a quinoa. Um, a quinoa noodle in there instead. And, and my goodness, those have like come a long way too. They really you know, have. Quinoa pasta is actually pretty darn good. I love quinoa pasta. I actually prefer it a little bit more of a regular pasta. So, so here's the deal. So I, I love quinoa, right? And I love pasta. So for me, the whole thing is like if I want quinoa, I'll, I'll, I'll eat that. And if I want pasta, I, I, I tried it one time on a whim. Like, you know what? I'm going to make this. And I was impressed at how good it was. It has a really, it, it, there's, I will tell you this, I think the window for keeping it al dente is a bigger window than for keeping this al dente. Absolutely. Which is weird, which is so weird. And the same also applies to, to some of the whole grain pastas. Yes. It's a little easier to keep them al, al dente. Like, you know, you go a minute too long with this and it's done, tamer. It's, you know, it's no, no bringing it back. Yeah. But, but with both the quinoa pasta and the, the, the multi-grain pastas, I think that window's a little bit bigger. Yeah, it's a little it's a little more forgiving. And what I really like about those um, about like the quinoa pasta and some of those other alternative types of pastas is that it has a little more, bit more protein to it. Oh yeah. So for sure. And as you cook it, that protein, you know, it's really all you need. Right. They're, yeah. They're definitely with both of those ingredients. There, there's a protein so. quality as opposed to this is basically semolina flour. Yes. Yes. But look at that. It's right. beautiful. All right. Well, I tell you what, why don't we add our rest of our ingredients at this point, and we can kind of let that finish up cooking while we're in break. Perfect. And uh, we'll come back, and we'll have this place all cleaned up and uh, ready to have a bowl of pasta. Sounds fantastic. All right. Don't go away.
Welcome back. I'm with Abby Gromion, and it is time to eat. Everything looks lovely and delicious, I gotta tell you. Thank you. I gotta tell you. Uh, I think we we'll start with a piece of cornbread. Okay. Right? Does, that, does that work? It looks perfect. It does. Absolutely perfect. Let me get some of that honey butter over here. That hot honey butter. That's right. Give that a little, little taste real quick here. Mmm. Oh, 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 that is hot honey mm -hmm. butter. It's good very though. Very good. Mm. Very, very good. Wow. Yeah, that's good. I like that a lot. All right. Nice cornbread too. Thank you. All right. The pièce de résistance. Let's see here. All right. Let's dig in. Mmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I gotta tell you, <laughs> that's really delicious. This is amazing. <laughs> that is so comforting and warming. I like I, I wanna I wanna I wanna sleep in a bowl of this. Yes. That's really good. <laughs> oh. And everything's cooked perfectly. I love that, you know, I'm always a little bit of a doubter. You're throwing pasta into the bowl with everything else. Work perfectly, perfectly al dente. Perfect. Excellent job. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll do this again? Absolutely. Great. Because just goes to show you, we really are cooking with some of the best chefs from right here in our own community. On behalf of the show, myself, Abby, have a great day. Thanks for watching Community Cooking, and we will see you next time. If you'd like a copy of the recipe seen on this show, send us a self-addressed stamped envelope to the Office of Cable and Community Relations. That's 3350 Civic Center Drive, Suite 200, in Torrance, California, 90503. Be sure to note the show number displayed on the screen. And don't forget, you can find all the fresh ingredients used on today's show at the Farmer's Market. Visit the one here in Torrance at Wilson Park. That's located at 2200 Crenshaw Boulevard. They're open every Tuesday and Saturday from 8 a.m. until 1 p.m., rain or shine. And if you'd like to be a guest on our show, email us at communitycooking at torrentca.gov and check us out online at youtube.com slash torrentcitycable and like us on Facebook at Community Cooking TV.